All right, let's start with VXLAN GBP. This is Daryl, and joining me is Justin for this session. This is the agenda. I will cover the overview, use cases, details, and caveats, and hand over to Justin for configuration, best practices, troubleshooting, and the demo of VXLAN GBP. VXLAN GBP, or Group Based Policy, this is a feature that enhances the campus VXLAN, VMBT, or Virtual Network Based Tunneling Solution. 10.8 will add support for VXLAN, GBP and VXLAN overlay networks. So this is basically this portion here. Group policy ID is what we refer to GBP. And that's part of the VXLAN header. We used to have the VNI and the reserve fields. So this group policy ID is now added. And that's supported on the 6300, 6400, and 8360 platforms. This feature will enable role-based policies. That means your role your policies are no longer tied to IP addresses. They're based on roles instead on the source. So you could have a device that is assigned a role name, such as employee or guests, based on the ingress VTAP, and that will remain effective, even if it deauthenticates and reauthenticates at a different location or a different subnet. So the policy would follow the device, no matter where it goes or where it authenticates. You might be asked by customers, what's the difference between VXLAN GBP and GPO? Well, they actually refer to the same thing. From this expired IETF draft, you see they expired back in 2019, GPO or group policy option, it's mentioned in the title. And further in the draft, you see that GBP is mentioned as part of the extension. So the group policy ID, that's what I mentioned earlier. So that's the GBP portion. Use case. The main use case is micro-segmentation. That means you can block or allow traffic between devices on the same subnet, same VLAN. You can assign them role names and block traffic or allow. Or if they are on different switches that are connected with a VXLAN tunnel, you can also do that policy for the same subnet, same VLAN for different roles. Another use case is macro segmentation. Macro means different subnets, different VLANs, or even different VRFs. You can see this example, I have two devices, different roles and different VLANs. So you can have a policy that you can prevent traffic or allow certain types of traffic between them. Same thing, different switches. If there's a VXTEN tunnel in between, you can block or allow traffic as well. You can see there are different VLANs, same VRF. And if you do route leaking between VRFs here, you can also have that role-based policy be effective across VRFs. Let's move on to some details next. So this is a Wireshark capture of what it looks like. If you drill into the VXLAN header, you see there's a GBP extension that indicates the G bit. If G bit is zero, that means the group policy ID is not being carried. It's not defined. The group policy ID is zero here. In addition, there's the D bit, the don't learn, and the A bit, the policy apply bit. So take note, CX does not use these two bits at this time. Only the G bit is used. So this is when there's no policy zero and G bit is zero. What happens if G bit is set to one? That means the policy ID is being carried. And you can see group policy ID, that's the value here. So this value actually is tied to the source. So this is the inner, inner source, not the outer source. This is the VTAP IP, but this is the your device, your client device, before it's been encapsulated by VXLAN. So this policy ID is tied to the source IP, okay? and it's transferred to the egress VTAP. So that the egress VTAP knows to map this policy ID to a role. So you, you see that the role name is actually not transferred between VTAPs, just the policy ID. And in the CX CLI, we actually use the GBP keyword. We enable it globally and you do a mapping for the roles. For example, your role name and the policy ID that I mentioned earlier. So that's how the egress VTAP or the destination VTAP knows what number, and what name is mapped to. So if it receives 100, it knows its employee role. This policy enforcement 
will work for traffic that's locally switched, host and destination on the same switch, for macro and micro, as well as across switches. The thing, important thing to take note of is the group policy ID is applied on the ingress VTAP after device authentication. So on the ingress VTAP here, a device authenticates, it is assigned a role, employee, and this number is sent, 100 is sent from the ingress to the egress VTAP. So the actual role names are not sent, just the policy ID number. And when that 100 is sent, your egress VTAP, you also have the same mapping. You see that they will know, they will know that 100 should be mapped to employee. That's why you need to have role names created locally on every VTAP that's mapped to the group policy ID. So you should use NetEdit or Central, for example, to push configs, the same configs to all your VTAPs. Ingress authentication, egress, you do policy and enforcement. So if you have devices on the same role, that means connectivity is allowed by default. For example, two employees, connectivity is allowed by default. Employee and guest, different roles, that's denied by default. And those role names actually pass down from ClearPass using the Aruba user role VSA. Once a user, a device authenticates, you can see this device is has successfully authenticated and assigned an employee role name. So that, so ClearPass doesn't know, actually know GBP. They do not know any GBP group policy ID. All they know is the role name and push down to the switch. The switch is the one that maps the role name to the ID. Caveats to be aware, source roles must be created at the ingress VTAP. Source and destination roles must be created at the egress VTAP. That's where you have your policy. That's why you need to have source and destination for your ACL. But of course, it's best to have the same roles at both ingress and egress. So if you have five roles, they should be in all, all VTAPs. Right? Otherwise, it would be difficult to troubleshoot. So take note, only 8K tags are supported in CX. So only the 13 bits are used as opposed to the 16 bits to find an IETF draft. The upper three bits on the tag are ignored by CX switches. A360 doesn't support role-based policies. It can only be used as a stub VTAP to relay GBP. So I'll cover stub VTAP later on. But why, why does it support role-based policy? Because it doesn't support authentication today. You need authentication to sign a role. So you cannot have a egress VTAP as an A360 in a DC. It can't do role-based policy. You can't have that, yeah, do your always policies to permit or deny in the DC. Of course, you could use to use it to transport. Map-based authentication is supported today to assign those roles on the 63 and 6400. Take note, no VSX at the access. You could use VSX on the 6400 towards your inferred devices, but not, not towards the authenticated users, the adult home. Single default tag. So all tra unknown traffic will be using a default tag of zero, and that is permitted at the egress VTAP. Can't be denied with a GPP policy. And all CPU generated traffic also be sent with row zero. So take for example, if your customer deploys VXN in the campus today, and six months down the road, they want to deploy GBP in a new segment of the network, that means if you have O and a new, traffic will be allowed by default because your existing, the old network without GBP has a default tag of zero, which is good, right? You do not break the network when you add this, when you add in GBP. Only local user roles are supported for GBP. Right? No downloadable user roles today. A role can only exist in one VLAN. You can't have the same role exist in multiple VLANs. So employee can exist in VLAN 11, VLAN 12. You need to have employee 11, employee 12 for individual VLANs. As mentioned, traffic is denied by default between different roles, right, on the same subnet. So if you do, for example, permit TCP traffic, traffic will not 
go through still because you forgot to allow ARP. So take note, you need to allow ARP if you have devices on the same subnet in order for your other policies to go through. Not currently supported, DHCP snooping of GBP, COA. Another caveat to be aware of is a multicast traffic limitation today. If you have a L2 switch, then you connect to an egress VTAP and you're trying to do multiple deny and permit policies towards this L2 switch. If you have multicast traffic, what happens is you want to try to deny, but this is the current implementation. Everything will be allowed. So take note, this doesn't work. If you're trying to deny multicast, that's connected to L2 switch. So if you do want to um, deny traffic for individual devices with multicast, you need to connect those devices to an individual port on the egress VTAP. So all devices need to be connected on their own port, not to an L2 switch. Right, I'll hand over to Justin next for configuration. All right, so the first thing we want to look at is the access VTAP or the distributed layer three gateway configuration. Um, so the important thing is we need to make sure we have connectivity, that our tunnels are up. So we need to make sure we have our underlay working with uh, BGP and our EVPNs configured correctly for the VLANs that we want to extend. Uh, we want to make sure that our VLANs are tied to our VNIs appropriately and that the uh, source and destination IPs on both sides are working correctly and that our SVIs are configured correctly. So this is on the access VTAP. And the real meat of for this presentation is with the group-based policy configuration. So the first thing we need to do is make sure that it's enabled globally uh, to turn it on for the whole system. The next thing is that we need to make sure that the roles are mapped to the IDs appropriately as part of the GBP configuration. So the first thing you'll need to do is create the actual user roles themselves using the port access role command. And then once you create the roles, you can map them to the GPP ID. Once that's ready to go, then we can start defining the policy. And so we use the class command classifiers to match on the traffic streams that we want to perform actions against. So we've introduced the class GBP IP and the class GBP MAC command to match the specific streams of traffic for that. So of course, IP is gonna be doing uh, TCP UDP, UDP ports and IP traffic. Uh, either from role to role. And then the MAC classifier will match the same role to role with uh, layer two ports or, uh, you know, for, for example, ARP. Uh, because if you're using different roles, traffic is going to be blocked by default. So you need to enable all traffic that you want to be able to be permitted between the user roles. So in this case, for, my, for the demonstration that will show, we need to allow ARPs through so that uh, our ICSIA endpoints can resolve. So then you can create your classifiers and, and match the specific source and destination uh, ports, source and destination roles. And then you need to tie those classifiers to your policy. And we use the port access GBP command for that. So you'll define your GBP policy and then you'll assign your classifiers to this. So this is a lot similar, should, should look a lot similar and have the same look and feel as user role policy uh, that we've typically used in the past. And so then you'll define your classes in the GBP policy, and then you can configure your action that you want that policy to take. So uh, currently we have permit and drop. Those are your two actions that we currently have for GBP, so we can uh, take action on that as well. So once we have our policies defined, then we can attach them to a role. So let's take, for instance, uh, this ultrasound for an ultrasound device. I have uh, specific classes on there. So uh, let's look at one that I'm going to drop. Uh, so I have this block maintenance. So I'm blocking the maintenance role. So I'm matching any traffic from the maintenance role to the ultrasound role. And one important command that you want to have is the count command, uh, especially for troubleshooting purposes, because this will count packets that are hitting that specific classifier. And then if you need to troubleshoot, you can always uh, go and look at the hit counts and make sure that the traffic is hitting the appropriate uh, traffic stream that we want to uh, classify against. So if you want to block from user role to user role, you create a classifier for that, and then you'll note it in the policy, and you can give it a, the drop command to drop traffic. 
and restrict access between those two roles. So this will do a full global drop between those roles. And then once you're finished with the policy, you can then associate it as part of the role command. So we use the associate GBP to associate GBP policies to that. Now you can still associate standard role policy too for subnet based uh, role restrictions. So you know, typically what we've been doing since 10.4 till now. Uh, so you can all have both. You can do both uh, associate GBP policy and associate uh, role policy for that. So those are the main new commands uh, for the access VTEP on how to configure GB, GBP. And we'll show that in a demo in a minute. So some of the best practices with this, uh, first, make sure GBP is configured on the VTEP, so that it's enabled globally so that we can uh, map the IDs to the roles. Uh, you can use uppercase for the role if you want to for aesthetic purposes, so, you know, capitalize if it looks cleaner. Um, uh, you can use lowercase for classes or policy. Uh, sometimes you might want to make sure you name the classes and policies similar to what the roles are. So at least you have an idea if you need to troubleshoot where those policies are mapped to. You know, if it's just a generic block TCP on everything, um, you know, you probably don't need to do that. But, you know, just important to be aware and cognizant of what you're naming your policies for troubleshooting purposes. For troubleshooting itself, the flow kind of goes first, you want to, if you're having issues, you want to check that the underlay has reachability and that the tunnels are up between the VTEPs. Uh, you want to check VTEP connectivity to clear path if we need to, because if we're going to be authenticating, we need to make sure that the uh, VTEP can actually reach out to the radius server or clear path to authenticate users. You want to make sure that the appropriate roles and policies are defined on the switch so that uh, you can enforce the traffic restrictions or, or permissions that you need to do throughout your network. You want to check that your GBP tags are correctly being exchanged between VTEPs. You want to check that your role-based policy is being work, is working as expected, and you want to check that the traffic flows are using the appropriate traffic classes. Uh, there's also the debug GBP command that'll give you the messaging going on behind the scenes in the policy. So, for example, if you remove a role or or uh, deauthenticate a shut down a port basically and remove the role from the port, uh, you'd see something like the GBP delete port from all roles. And if you re-enable that port, it would show GBP add port to all filters in the uh, debug output. So the first step, checking underlay network reachability and tunnels between VTEPs. Uh, so you want to first make sure that the tunnel source and destination IPs are being correctly advertised in the underlay network. So you don't want to do show IP route on both sides, test pings between the loopback source and destination IPs. And if you see any connectivity issues, you can go in and, and fix whatever connectivity issues are going on. Uh, I know one of our issues, I think we were missing uh, EVPN configuration on one of our switches after reboot. Uh, we didn't save it. So, you know, important things to check. If there are no underlay, underlay network issues, then you need to check the tunnels, make sure the tunnels are up. And you can do that using the show interface VXLAN VTAPs, and that'll give you a list of all the tunnels and you wanna make sure that they're operational. So if an EVPN tunnel is down, you'll want to then ensure that the, you got the correct EVPN configs, that it you know, even exists in the uh, VTEP itself, and add it in if it doesn't. So for ClearPass, you need to make sure that whatever switch is going to authenticate has connectivity to ClearPass or the RADIUS server. So you want to make sure, of course, in the uh, running configuration that the RADIUS server actually exists, the configuration line exists. Uh, if you're doing RADSEC using TLS, make sure your certificates are on there. If you're just doing standard um, passphrase authentication, make sure you have the correct um, radius key on both ends of the radius server and switch side. And then, of course, uh, check connectivity to the radius server by you know, sending a ping to the radius server. Uh, make sure it's over the correct VRF if your radius server is using a different VRF than default. Next, you want to check that the desired roles and policies are created. So you can do a show port access role command that'll list all your user roles. Uh, you want to make sure that you have the right VLAN that exists, as well as that the policy is attached to that role. If you need to list the policy, you can do show port access GBP, and that will list all the policies on the switch. And you will make sure you have the correct action taken as part of your uh, classifier statements. And then that, of course, that the correct policy is applied to, or the correct classifiers are tied to the correct GPP policies. 
Next, you'll want to check the authenticated devices that they're or users that they're assigned to the correct roles. So you can do that using the show port access client command. Uh, you want to make sure that the you know if you're doing MAC authentication that they map to the correct role. If you're doing dot one x that the user dot one x user has the correct role assigned to it. So you check the authentic authentication configs, check their pass, make sure your enforcement policy and services in ClearPass are correctly configured if you're not seeing the right output. If all else fails, check GBP tags that they're being exchanged between the VTEPs. You can do a packet capture, use port mirroring and a packet capture, and then you'll want to see that the group policy ID is configured correctly in the uh, VXLAN packet. So you want to check both, uh, you know, that the source GBP tags are sent from, uh, sent in both directions. And if the expected tags are not, aren't seen, then you're not going to get the, then, then your policy are, isn't going to work. Your GBP policy isn't going to work because that's going to be tied to your GBP ID. ID. So you want to make sure you have the appropriate ID configured uh, and mapped to the GBP, uh, mapped to the GBP policy and role. Then you'll need to, make sure that the policy is working as expected. So you can check counters using the show part access GBP uh, role name and hit or policy name and hit counts command. And you'll look, you'll see your classifier statement and make sure your hit counts are increasing. So then you'll know that the, uh, you have the correct traffic uh, going, you have the correct classifier matching on the correct traffic stream that you want to uh, use policy enforcement against. So let's take a look at how all this works in a demo. So I'm going to show a few use cases here. So uh, use case one, let's take a look at micro segmentation. Well, here, let me explain the, the uh, um, topology here. So we have an access switch uh, going connected to a sub VTEP, and then we have a uh, simulated gateway using a 6300 switch also connected to a sub VTEP. So the gateway to sub VTEP have uh, static VXLAN tunnels, and the access VTEP to the sub VTEP have uh, EVPN VXLAN tunnels. So we can get traffic across the sub VTEP from the gateway to the access VTEP or vice versa. We have different roles configured on both ends here. So I'm going to show how different policy can affect the different traffic streams between the roles. So I have a bunch of traffic streams created. So the first thing we're going to look at is micro segmentation. So users, clients on the same VLAN on the same switch uh, using unicast traffic. I'm going to go into my access switch here. Uh, and if I do a show port access client, I can see I have my clients all ready to go. Uh, if I do my show port access GBP, you can see all my different traffic streams here that I have configured, all my different classifiers that I have configured, and everything's permit right now. Um, so by default, we have there's built in policy kind of in the background that the switch uses, everything's permitted, but this is more for the default roles. So roles that don't get a GBP ID, that they'll have a specific, you know, basically allow all on everything until we take some kind of, uh, create some kind of policy for that. So we're going to look at the ultrasound policy. If we do a show run current, so I have multiple Traffic, uh, traffic classifiers that I can do with that. So I also have one that I'm blocking TCP traffic um, on this role, on these roles itself. So I'm going to add that in. I have traffic streams currently running with my uh, traffic generator. So I have multiple streams going between switches locally. I have a multicast stream going local between roles. And then I have some streams going across the sub VTAP. So you can all see that uh, by the traffic item name and the uh, transmit port and receive port. I have the role names on there. So I have employee to heart monitor, employee to ultrasound. Um, there's multiple on employee right now I have because uh, ICSI only lets you name the port once. So I have a guest role on here and a maintenance role on here as well, which I'll show in just a minute uh, when I take some block some traffic between that. So we're going to block uh, TCP traffic on this role here on uh, ultrasound. And then once we turn that on, we should start seeing uh, the traffic hits go here. So we're blocking traffic uh, from the heart monitor role to the ultrasound role on um, 
this unicast stream. So we're gonna, once it turns blue, it means we're gonna start dropping packets. So that's showing that we can micro segment based on a port, a specific TCP port 20, and we can drop traffic uh, just on a specific TCP or UDP port. So how that looks in the running config, if I look at my classifier up here, so this is the one I'm doing. I'm matching TCP port, TCP traffic from heart monitored ultrasound, and it equals port 20 or FTP, and then I'm counting those packets. So if I wanted to make sure that I was uh, having the hit counts on that, I can do a show port access GBP. Oops. Timing out on me, show port access GBP, ultrasound, and then hit counts. So we can see here that this is where my traffic's been hitting, and I have other traffic streams hitting on that uh, policy as well. So once we're good with that, I can remove the blocking and go back to permit. And that's micro segmentation on the same switch. So now let's look at micro segmentation between uh, static and EVPN VXLAN tunnels. So this is going across the sub VTEP now. And we're going to uh, restrict traffic over here between uh, em the employee and maintenance role. Uh, we'll, we'll just do it at the gateway side. So we've already we put policy on the access side. Now let's look at the gateway side. Uh, since we're using CX switches, we can do the same thing over there. So I'm going to log into my gateway switch. And then I'm going to go into, whoops, I'm going to go into my show port access GBP, make sure I got all my policies configured correctly. And then I'm going to go into my employee policy, do a show run current. So I have traffic on this side going over here. What did that add? Actually, oops, I gotta do it on this side. I'm on the wrong switch. Port access GDP. There it is. I'm on this side. I'm back to the access side. So I'm going to put in, let's see, I went. Oh, I was on the right one. Okay. Port access, I'm on the wrong role here. So port access employee, show run current. This is the one I want. I'm going to block traffic from maintenance to employee. So I go here, action drop. And then we should start seeing traffic drop between uh, employee, it should be an employee and employee down here on the stub. We'll start seeing the traffic increase, and that's here. Uh, if I can move that, you'll see that's blue, it's highlighted, so traffic's starting to drop. So if I refresh the settings, you would see 100% packet loss. So that's how we can drop traffic across the stub VTAP. So the ID is being carried across that stub VTAP on both the maintenance user role and the employee user role. And once we enforce that policy, it's mapping that to those IDs, and then we can drop traffic based on that. So that's just generic user role to user role traffic. You can also do port based, you know, put down to a UDP or TCP port, or you can just block all traffic between roles itself. So we'll go ahead and reverse that one. The next case we're going to use look at is a role without a GB, oops, a role without a GBP ID. So I have a guest user that's on uh, this switch and there is no role mapping for this. So if I do a show GBP role mapping, oops, show GBP role mapping, we can see that I have no guest defined, no ID, so it's gonna get this default role of zero. So in my traffic streams, if I go to my Ixia port, I know which one it is, it's this 200.6, I know that's my guest role, and it's up, I have an endpoint, I have some traffic already flowing to that. So if I go back to my traffic items, I can go down uh, through my IP addresses here, and I can see here's 200.6 as a destination, and all traffic is currently being allowed through that by default. So that's what happens when you have a role that you have GBP enabled on the switch, but you have a role that exists, maybe you don't want it to use GBP, um, it'll, traffic will all be allowed through that role, to or from that role. 
and that way you know it doesn't affect what's currently in production next use case we'll take a look at is macro segmentation i'm going to kind of do both of these at the same time uh, macro segmentation on the same switch and across uh, evpn tunnels so with that uh, i'm going to go back to my ultrasound roll and then I'm going to use this allow all. So basically this is all traffic to the ultrasound roll. And I'm gonna drop traffic to that. So this is all traffic hitting my ultrasound roll and then we should see a whole bunch of uh, traffic streams losing packets here. So we're starting to see increases here. So heart monitor ultrasounds dropping traffic. Um, and then across the sub BTEP, we're seeing traffic drops. And then up here, employee to ultrasound on the same switch. The so same switch is blocking traffic from both the employee role and the heart monitor role that I actually have traffic configured uh, to that. And then uh, heart monitor ultrasound. So that's how we can block traffic uh, either across the sub VTEP or on the same switch as well. So we, we can do macro segmentation from different VLANs because that's what the uh, employee to ultrasound is. And uh, also from the same VLAN as well with a gener uh, global block all. So that's all the use cases with, uh, that's all, those are the use cases we wanted to show you with uh, GBP. So I'll turn it back over to Daryl to go over sub VTEPs. Okay.